au wika huli vela ka hunu au ke au wika huli lole ka lani o ke au wiku ka ia ka kala e ho mala mala mai ka mala o ke au makali ka po o ka vale vale ho o kumu ho nua o ke kumu o ka lipo i lipo ai o ke kumu o ka po i po ai o ka lipo lipo o ka lipo lipo o ka lipo o ka la o ka lipo o ka po po wale ho i hana o ka po hana o kumu lipo i ka po he kani hana o po wale i ka po he wahi ni hana o ka u ku ko a ko a hana o ka na he a ko a ko a ye In this place called Kalepo Lepo, within the Moku or district of Kula and the Ahupua'a of Kaonoulu, the sea creeps up to the land as it always has done, creeps backward, creeps forward. As the tide begins to ebb, stones appear above the surface of the water, first one, then another, and another, until a thousand foot crescent of wave washed rock is revealed. This is the wall of Ko Ie Ie, an ancient Hawaiian lokoi'a or fish pond that sits here today like a smile upon the sea. A royal fish pond for the raising and fattening of fish that at one time produced more than 2,000 pounds of prized mullet a year for some of Hawaii's most renowned ali'i or chiefs. Constructing these kuapa or seawalls was no easy task. Ko Ie Ie covered an area of six acres. Its rock walls were six feet high, 30 feet wide at the top, and 42 feet at the base. Legend has it that they were built in a single night by Menehune, a race of Hawaiian leprechauns. It is just as likely that they were built over months or years by armies of Kanaka human beings, 10,000 strong, passing rocks of heavy basalt from far in the uplands all the way down to the sea. Since in the life of the ancient Hawaiian, gods were forever present, two stones in every fish pond took on special significance. An upright ku stone, representing the fish god Kuula Kai was placed on the east side of the wall and on the west a pahina stone to signify the regenerative female power of the moon and the perfect balance contained in all of nature. Of the six types of fresh and saltwater fish ponds known throughout Polynesia, the design of Lokokuapa is unique to Hawaii. These enclosed semicircular rock wall fish ponds were built on shoals or reef flats near a freshwater stream or spring. The shoreline served as the inner wall of the pond and the outer walls facing the open sea had puka or openings called awai kai, channels installed with makaha or sluice gates. These makaha made of ohia or lama wood allowed sea water to flow in and out of the pond. In the Hawaiian way of thinking, it is maka or eyes that would see the fish and ha, the breath of the living sea that would circulate the water. Fish would swim into the pond through the bars of the maka. And since fish are a lot like people, they would eat and eat and eat feeding upon seaweed and algae in the shallow, nutrient-rich water. Until, like this o'opuhue, or puffer fish, they grew too fat to get out. Eh. Hawaiians would find all kinds of sea life in the lokoi'a. As the saying goes, fish ponds were things that beautified the land, 
and a land with many fish ponds was called a fat land. When fish trapped in the pond became plentiful, they were harvested in various ways. Some were speared, large ones were scooped up by hand, and others gathered up by nets. Sometimes the Lavaia fishermen trained fish, such as mullet or ava, to swim near the shoreline or seawall by feeding them taro, sweet potato, or breadfruit. And some were poached by four-legged thieves. In Hawaii, there is as much variety in fresh and saltwater fish ponds as there is in the topography in which they lie. This pahonu, for instance, on Oahu, was designed for the harvesting of turtles for the dinner tables of those who held noble rank. But all fish ponds in Hawaii had at least one thing in common. They were all situated in a traditional pie-shaped land division called an ahupua'a that extended from its narrow origin high in the mountains to its widest span culminating at the reef line in the sea. This balanced form of land management granted every inhabitant access to fresh water, food, medicine, and building materials for shelter and canoes, all the ingredients necessary to sustain life. An ahupua'a was called rich according to the number of fish ponds it contained. At the time Captain Cook arrived in Hawaii in 1778, more than 350 thriving fish ponds were spread out along the coasts and uplands of the island chain, feeding thousands. By 1900, less than 100 remained. By the dawn of the 21st century, there were only four working fish ponds left in all of Hawaii. Time, erosion, natural disasters, development, and the changes in lifestyle have taken their toll. Yet along the coasts of our islands, where ghostly remnants of a glorious time command our gaze, there are some who still remember Na Mo'olelo A Kapo'ekaiko, the tales and traditions of the people of old. This place was known to our ancestors as Ko Ie Ie, rushing waters. And way, way back in the 16th century, in the time of the bad chief, Umi, there was one arrogant, you know, sassy, high maka maka overseer who was Konohiki of the Moku, the district of Kula. It was he who summoned the people of Maui to rebuild the fish ponds in Kaono Ulukai. <laughs> But when the Konohiki told the people to build fish ponds for the king at Kaono Ulukai, one man, Kikau, a reader of portents, protested that no such works could be completed without the help of the Menahune. For his insubordinance, Kikau was told that when the king's ponds were completed, he would be baked in the emu, an oven in the ground. Until that time, he would have to work like the others in stacking the rocks to build the pond. There were thousands of workers stretched out for miles, passing stones from hand to hand. The lifting of stones and the trampling of so many feet raised so much dust, the Konohiki made fun of them and called them or the men of Kalepo Lepo root in the dirt. That is how Kalepo Lepo got its name, the dirt. Just then, the Kaumuku wind that still blows today blew a blast of dirt in the face of the Konohiki. <sighs> Thinking that Kikau and his friends were mocking him, he went into a rage. Hele! Hele! As their punishment, he ordered them to dive and bring up heavy stones from the bottom of the sea to make the walls of the ponds. And so it went, 
over and over again. Every time the fish pond walls were almost complete, the Konohiki would taunt Kikau, telling him he would still die a horrible death in the Imu. But Kikau, he wasn't scared. He knew that the Amokoa spirits of the Menahuni were all powerful and that they would render the Konohiki's work to nothing before the last stone was laid. That night, a great storm came up. Wind, rain, thunder, and lightning, an earthquake and heavy seas sent its fury on Kalepo Lepo. Under cover of the storm, the Menehunis were seen tearing down the sea walls, undoing the work of the Konohiki so Kikau might not die. And by the break of day, all the work had been undone. The sea walls, gone. It took a long time. But eventually, the Konohiki came to his senses and asked Kikau for help. Kikau summoned his elven brothers. And as the story goes, Chok Menahuni came from the uplands and the fish ponds of Ko Ie at Ka Lepo Lepo were rebuilt in one glorious night. The rocks you see today are still there. And the sand dunes. And the sand dunes. And the coconut tree. And the coconut tree. And the Menehuni Shore Condominium. And the Menehuni... Hey! Auntie, tell us about the mo'o. What's a mo'o? A mo'o vahine is a female lizard who sleeps in the pond and can take human form whenever she wants. The one who comes here to Ko'ie'ie is Mo'o Mokuhinia, an Aumakua or spiritual guardian from Lahaina who showed herself here at the exact time of the death of Kapua'ipa, the beloved son of Kamehameha I. If you ever see foam on the surface of the water, no eat the fish, it's kapu. Does she eat children? She might, huh? Eh? You like try go swimming. Hey, aloha vale. Hey, aloha vale no ki hawaii ne na kamehameha i fo umanai. Hey, aloha vale. Hey, aloha vale no ki hawaii ne na kamehameha i fo umanai. No maui ke ali i. Do maui ke ali i vahi ne nani o ke au kahi koko na waha na u. No maui ke ali i. Do maui ke ali i vahi ne nani o ke au kahi koko na waha na u. Kua hoa a kua. Kua hoa kua o ki hawaahi ne na ka lehu lehu no i ka kua ai. Kua hoa kua. Ua hoa kua o ki hawaahi ne na ka lehu lehu no i ka kua ai. He mo o a kua. He mo o a kua wahi ne ka ulana mai hawaii a ni i hau. He mo o a kua. He mo o a kua wahi ne ka ulana mai hawaii a ni i hau. Ho i e ke kapu. Ho i e ke kapu me ki hawaahi ne e o la mako a mau akula. Ho i e ke kapu. Ho i e ke kapu me ki hawaahi ne e o la mako a mau akula. By the 1800s, the mo'o in Ko'ie'ie was well appeased. Kamehameha the Great enlisted the people of West Maui to rebuild the fish pond walls, and over the years, the ponds at Kalepolepo, full of choice mullet, became a resort for Hawaiian royalty. Many reigning monarchs of the post-contact era feasted here, including Kamehameha III, and Kamehameha the fifth. Rolling down to old Maui. 
By the mid-1800s, the little seaport village of Kalepolepo, with a population of 2,000, was bustling with activity. Whaling ships plied the offshore waters of Ma'alaya Bay, and the great beasts were brought here to extract their oil. A famous trading post, the Koa House was built near the fish pond walls by a man from New York, John Joseph Halstead. Coconut trees and coal grew beside pools of clear water. Along the banks grew the taro and ape. Ko ie ie lokoi'a was fat with fish. One of the greatest of all Hawaiian scholars, David Malo preached to his congregation here and at his nearby church, but he never lived to see what was to become his greatest fear, that one day a foreign power would come to rule his beloved islands. If a big wave comes in, large and unfamiliar fishes will come from the dark ocean. When they see the small fishes of the shallows, they will eat them up. The white man's ships have arrived with clever men from the big countries. They will devour us. It wasn't long before the Kaumuku wind brought bad tidings to Kalepolepo. The Kula forests were cut for sandalwood. Cattle trampled the nearby fields. Torrential rain soiled the Aina, washed the earth from the uplands, filling the fish ponds with silt. Sand dunes drifted into the ponds, and with less vegetation to keep it cool, the climate got hotter and the land more barren. By 1876, Kalepolepo took on an abandoned, ghostly look. By the turn of the century, it was desolate. Only a few fishermen remained. Today, at Kalapolepo Beach Park, the days of royal pomp and circumstance are no more, and the fish in the pond at Ko Ie Ie come and go as they please. No longer hunted to extinction, magnificent humpback whales still frolic in the bay, and endangered hawksbill turtles still hatch out to make their miraculous journey back to the sea. They are not the only ones coming back to Kalepolepo. There are more and more every day who still hear the call of the pond. Au Au Na Lokoi Ao Maui. The Fish Pond Association of Maui has joined with native Hawaiians and the Maui Ohana to rebuild and restore Ko Ie Ie to its former glory and splendor. Every stone carries the mana or spiritual power of the ancestors. The stones will move, and the walls of Ko Ie Ie will rise again. Cool. It's a damn tough life, full of toil and strife. We wail men wander go. And we don't give a damn. When the day is done, how hard the winds did blow. For we're homeward bound from the Arctic ground, with a good ship taut and free. And we don't give a damn when we drink our rum with the girls of old Maui. Rolling down to old Maui, me boys. Rolling down to old Maui. Where we're homeward bound from the Arctic ground, rolling down to old Maui. Once more we sail with a northly gale through the ice and wind and rain. Them native maids, them tropical glades, we soon shall see. Yeah. 